Good evening, everybody. Revel, one in 48 tornado in Desert Storm colours. Just finished that. And uh, while I've been building that, I've also been taking a load of photographs so that I can explain basically how I've put that together from bits on sprue to finished job, the one that you can see there. Uh, I've been chatting to a couple of guys, uh, like I do, from all over the world, and I keep getting asked questions on, do you do this first before you do that? How do you put that onto there? I can't get this part to stick, what am I doing wrong? And especially with this kit, because there's so much uh, flash and ejector pin marks on it, it's just unbelievable. So that will be covered throughout the build. So what I've been doing is taking a load of photographs as I've been going along. And uh, I've made loads and loads of folders in my photo album. Uh, and I've broken it down. I've broken it down into about 10 or 11 different categories, maybe a few more. So that once I start to post on, uh, and start to overlay some photographs you can see what I'm talking about and it might be one video it might be two it might be three uh, I'm on a timer uh, I usually get about 20-25 minutes before the camera crew go on uh, which is basically how long you can shoot before your phone says you better do another one and I think if you watch some of my previous videos you'll see that some of them are in two parts. One's usually about 25 minutes and one's usually about three or four minutes. Uh, and that's because I, I, it breaks it up into segments. So I've got one eye on the clock and uh, already two minutes and 10 seconds in. So without further ado, uh, I'm not going to cue the music. I'm just going to chat away uh, while I'm uh, going to... And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some photos up. Okay, and how I'm going to explain this is how I built it, because how I built it is different to how it tells you to build it in the instruction book. Okay, so there's certain things uh, that are a little bit unorthodox, and uh, you'll see as the slideshows go on, once I start popping them on, uh, and uh, you'll say, well, what the hell, it doesn't say to do that in instructions. No, it doesn't. Okay, I watch other people build all the time. Uh, I'm not a telly watcher. I'm a YouTube watcher, even at my age. And I subscribe to people like Greg Phillips, who is an absolutely cracking model builder. Hiya, Greg, hope you're well. And he's built this kit, and he's built the ADV, and you sort of watch people like Greg, and you you know, you take on your own skills, and you push your own boundaries, and try and do what you can. Okay, uh, what, and what I've done is I've been able to sort of mix what he's done with a couple of others uh, with, with what I do because this is my sixth one in 48 Revel Tornado. So I kind of know what I'm doing, but at the same time, I'm always learning new things. Uh, I know that on Tornado number five, I learned all about the buckets, uh, the exhaust insertion, and how to make that a damn sight easier than what the instructions tell you to do so with four minutes on the clock uh just a couple of things then so number one it is unorthodox uh you will see things that uh you know look a little bit tricky uh they are tricky they were tricky to me uh, and if they're tricky to me they're going to be tricky to you but what i'll do is on the photos i'll pop them on and if you need to pause it just have a look while you're building yours then feel free uh, one of my guys is very simple. Uh, the way that I've changed things is because I, I'm under the impression that I, I know it's an old saying, but if you always do what you've always done, then you'll always get what you always got. And from that, I don't have to be the best builder in the world. That's not what I'm aiming for. What I'm aiming for personally is that my build now is better than the one that I did before it. 
It's as simple as that. And using that little mantra there, changing things out and swapping things and taking risks, obviously, you know, that lets you elevate your status a little bit. On the photos uh, and in the dialogue, you'll hear me talk about GCU quite regularly. And uh, when you're looking through instructions and what's GCU? GCU, very simple, general cleanup. So general cleanup, GCU, that's ejector pin marks on inside of mating surfaces, sanding flushed edges, watching for flash, cutting lugs off gates, off sprues, you know how it is, okay? So if you hear that GCU or you see it, then you'll know what it is. So when I start building aircraft, I normally start with armament and fuel tanks first. So without further ado, let's do fuel tanks. So remove remove the parts from the sprue obviously now the part with the fuel tanks on this particular kit once you've taken them off the sprue don't don't clean them up don't do gcu with a knife because a knife will put uh you know it'll put a chunk out so as patience is called for when you cut your two halves off <laughs> sanding sticks okay whether you've got professional ones or you've been down to a local nail salon, which is what I do, and said, give me all your old sanding sticks. Uh, you know, that's that that's the way to go for GCU on there. Uh, try to avoid the blade. Uh, once you've glued them together, obviously you're going to get a seam. And to remove that seam, I've done a coarse, a medium and a finished sponge. Uh you can do it, okay, if you just take your time. And remember, remember this mantra all the way through. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always got. And you'll see people watching this video and they'll flick through Instagram and they'll flick through Facebook and they're commenting and liking and loving and wowing. And they'll sit back in the chair and they'll think, why can't I do that? You can, you can. I you can because i can you've just got to not always do what you've always done and and if you think that something's not right do it again and do it again and do it again until it is right it is that simple if you've got two halves of fuel tanks there's a seam down it and you'll sand that off and once you're happy once no that's wrong once you know it's right it's right if you're sanding the seam down and it's got holes in it and a line and you can still see it, you know as well as I do that that's wrong because a fuel tank can't got a seam line down the centre, top or bottom. It's a cylinder. So if that means that you've got to fill it and sand it and fill it and sand it and fill it and sand it, that's what you do. You do that until it's right. So for GCU on your fuel tanks, sanding sponges okay but do that before you attach the fins while we're talking about fins on this bird for some particular reason they're on backwards now i say backwards they look backwards when i first started building tornadoes i put all my fins on other way and when you look at them when you look at instructions that are absolutely pants you can't really tell so that's one of the aims of this video. That's me telling you that it, they go on fat end on. And if you look at these pictures that I'm putting up, you'll see what I mean. But make sure that you sand that seam down top and bottom before you attach the fins, okay? Once you've attached them, it makes it a little bit awkward. So uh, let me just have a look. So GCU on your fins, your instructions calls for H197. It says that's one of your fins. Actually, it's not. H197 is the fuel tank. The fins are made up of H199 and H198. Now, the picture that I'm just going to flick up now shows you the configuration of those fins. So you've got, I think it's 199s on top, even though that picture says 197s. I know it does. I've done it wrong. And 198s on bottom. So if you follow that little configuration there, you'll not go far wrong. 
So by now you should have two tanks off the sprue, cleaned up, GCU, sanded flush, lovely, filled if required, sanded back, fins on, put to one side. Now at the top of that fuel tank, plural, fuel tanks, you'll see two lugs there, you're locating pins for your pylons. And what I normally do is I'll get my little drill, my tiny little drill, that's probably just about uh, big enough that it'll take a cocktail stick, if you will. Because what I do is I drill a hole on the centre line in between those two little lugs so that I can put a cocktail stick into there and it fits in snug and nice and tight. So you don't need a 10 millimeter hole. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to prime and paint okay without having to touch surface because i've got a little block of polystyrene and once i've primed it the cocktail stick is in the hole and then it goes into that little block of polystyrene okay and it just makes it a whole lot easier onto the sky shadow then so again it's coarse and medium and fine for general cleanup and you can do that until it's seamless uh that's a couple of nice little parts there and then there's some attachments uh, to go on. Now, if you look at the attachments, see a little picture coming up. Uh, it says that they are parts 204, and actually it's parts 207 and 208. So that's labelled incorrectly. And angled down, okay. So again, you can see I've got it. I think I've put mine on a pot of glue, and I've made sure that they're the right way because they are directional all right make sure that you put them on the right way so that's sky shadow done then you're onto your boz pod now your boz pod again uh two halves uh just be careful because there's a round attachment that goes into the back end and it don't just fit snug to the back end it actually goes in the tube uh you have to put that in now okay so when it's still two halves cut that little part off uh and pop that in now right uh then dry fit obviously your two halves make sure that the happy with everything fit in once you've done that get them glued together clamp it with a couple of house pegs or a couple of them little clamps don't waste tape just need a couple of clamps or your fingers even for 10 or 15 seconds uh, let that bond uh, and that'll be fine. When you come to sand those seams down, you have to be really careful because if you look closely, there's a there's a boatload of rivet detail on there. And again, when it comes to, once you've painted it and glossed it and you think, right, I'm going to stick a, a jug of flora around this. If you sand it too hard, you'll lose all that detail. Okay, so weapon of choice for sanding a boss pod is a fine sanding stick. Now, if you think, well, what's the point in doing that? I might as well just use a medium and cut my time in half. Fill your boots. All right, it's that simple. But you'll lose that detail, okay? So, it's up to you. Uh, the angle of the back of the boss pod is uh, it's angled, okay? So, again, when you look at it from the side and when you look at the instructions, uh, you'll see uh, that there's a, like a chamfer on it. And again, that edge might be a little bit rough. It might need a little bit of GCU. Next, we're on to belly rails. So get your clamps ready uh, because it's two halves. Make sure that you check inside for ejector pin marks. Uh, they were in abundance on mine. Uh, get your clamps ready on your mating surfaces. And that's dead, dead simple. It's two halves. Little pin, pin and hole clipped together bead of glue top and bottom clamp it chuck it to one side it's done simple as that however me being me you can see that i've added some photo etch to mine because i've got a bucket full of photo etch from an old kit that i had donated and i just wanted to sort of tart mine up a little bit now or ordinarily you can't see what i've done anyway because obviously it's underneath so whether it'll waste the time or not you know, I did it. I, I just fancied doing it at the time. 
you don't have to go that way. I'm sure that everybody hasn't got, you know, a bucket full of photo acts like I've got. So for belly rails, it's just clamp them together and glow. Now, just before I move on, if you're not having them on, then you don't need to drill the holes out in the bottom of the fuselage. If you're only having the centre one on, you only need to drill the centre holes out. And if you're only having the outer ones on, you look at the instructions and it's there's two quite significant holes to drill out at the back end. When you come to drill the holes out at the front, you'll be looking and you'll be like, eh, where are they go? Because, <laughs> again, instructions met on a Friday afternoon at 5 to 5. The part where it tells you to drill the two front locating holes, not there. So you have to use a little bit of Build experience, if you will, to get your head round out of them. All right. Uh, you'll fathom it out. It's no problem. Uh, moving on, you can see now uh, I've masked the canopy, but I'll cover that on uh, a little bit later on. Uh, we some uh, thin strips of Tamiya masking tape. So I've got some, I think it's about four mil wide, three mil wide. Uh, and I lay it on to my cutting mat. And then I actually cut it in half lengthways, obviously until the strips are literally less than a millimetre wide. And I know that you'll be looking and saying, why don't you just use bendy tape, that white bendy tape? I used to do until somebody just pointed out to me one day that once you've got bendy tape on, it actually contracts and it starts to leave gaps. So that's why I use Tamiya masking tape. Uh, and then again, you can see primed, painted, glossed, deckled, weathered, armament, Bospod, sky shadow, fuel tanks, all, all job done, all good, all cleaned up and all ready to go. What I have is I have a, one of those little plastic takeaway tubs. And uh, whenever I've sort of built anything, uh, I toss it in there. Uh, and then I know that it's ready for priming and painting. Okay. Coming up to 17 minutes, uh, so I'm actually going to wrap this one up. And what we've covered, we've covered uh, general hollows uh, and fuel tanks. So we'll call stage one fuel tanks for the Revel Tornado. Uh, coming up next uh, is going to be, we're going to start on the flaps configuration. Uh, this particular kit flaps up or down, in or out, upside down, roundabout. Flaps down on this kit looks absolutely stunning. And I have flaps down on all of the ones that I've built because it does look that good. But again, when you come to look at the part, you start scratching your head and you're like, what? So next topic, flaps. And uh, I'll cover that with some more photos. And hopefully we'll be able to pick it up. Cheers. <laughs>